This is the president-elect of the United States. He receives any number of different intelligence uh, pieces of information from a number of different sources, including the PDB, the Presidential Daily Briefing, which is a product. But in addition to that product, Andrew, he receives um, regular briefings from his security team, from outside sources, and he, your viewers should, should know, has agreed to receive this top-level intelligence briefing from the nation's top, top intelligence officials here in New York. Right. What do you make of the Julian Assange interview where he says that uh, the Russians and nor, the Russians nor a state-sponsored group of any sort provide them we, uh, we with should the pay, DNC emails? We should pay significant attention to that because he knows the sources, he knows the source of the emails that, that he received. And I, I would note that the expulsion of these uh, 30 or so uh, Russian operatives last week, you never heard the word WikiLeaks, which is curious to me only because that is what we're all talking about. I know the Clinton people are very embarrassed on, about the uncomfortable content. content of the emails that Hillary Clinton can't find her voice. She lacks judgment. Chelsea's a spoiled brat. I mean, all her own team saying this. And I know that was uncomfortable. Other people are trying to blame the election results on everything except the message and the messenger that were completely and congenitally flawed. I would say irredeemably flawed, um, to coin a phrase. But uh, we should listen to Julian Assange on this because he knows these were. This was the information that he put forward. I think that's a bombshell. Do you oh. think that the, uh, I mean, the the hacking probably had very little to do, as you've described it, the substance of it probably doesn't affect most people. But the fact that we're talking about it, as opposed to talking about what our trade policies are, what the healthcare policy should be, and how we. Uh, repeal and replace, and what exactly that looks like for the average infrastructure, person. Infrastructure, so infrastructure, many things. and all of that. It strikes me that one of the benefits of the tweeting is he's tweeting about issues that people really care about, and yes. he's doing it directly. And the media is still staying on. I looked at a, an alternative network early this morning, and all they can talk about was the hacking. I don't even think they understand what was hacked. It, it, they make it. It often sounds like. The election was hacked, and that's not well, the Well, they case. hope that many, you're right, many do hope that if you confuse and conflate these issues um, constantly, that people will come away saying, oh, I get it, and this is why she lost in 77,000 votes. I mean, it wasn't even close, folks. Right. Uh, he got 100 more electoral mm -hmm. votes than Mitt Romney did, and Mitt Romney had uh, all the king's horses, all the king's men in the Republican Party uh, supporting him. Um, the other thing that you just said is a very important thing. If I can go back and I can look at something that really hasn't changed since the campaign, it's many in the media telling America what's important to them right. and Americans saying, are you kidding me? That's not important to me. So there's two narratives now. One, and, and it's gone back and forth with, with what President-elect Trump has said on how President Obama and his administration is paving the way for the new administration. On the one hand, I, I see it said that they're doing everything they possibly can, and, and President-elect Trump has said some, uh, some nice things about how President Obama and conversations they've had and how it's been uh, friendly. Then I see other uh, things written that, okay, you, you do the Arctic uh, the drilling, you do the, the two, uh, you know, the million acres that, that you mm -hmm. grab before you, you're on your way out. I've seen um, headlines that uh, uh, the President Obama was trying to tie President-elect Trump's hands right from the get-go in, in terms of, uh, you know, the transition. Which is true? What, uh, which is the true narrative? I think both are true, and here's why. They certainly, and I've witnessed it firsthand, they, the President and the President-elect certainly speak on a regular basis. They both love this country and want a peaceful transition in our great democracy and are working hard to do that. President Obama's senior staff has been very good to those of us on President-elect Trump's senior staff. Ryan's previous, our incoming chief of staff, has met with Dennis. Did you McDonald's meet with Valerie Jarrett? I think you said I have lunch with her tomorrow. Tomorrow in, in the White House. I want to hear about we'll that. We'll be talking about a number of different things there, and I very much appreciate her invitation and all the help she's offered. Uh, and so, so that's on the one hand. On the other, they are ideologically, politically di different, and their vision for this country is different. And I understand that Donald Trump will be there maybe for eight years, and President Obama will be there for 17 more days, and he's in a rush to try to sew up other pieces of his legacy. He'll go to Chicago and give his farewell speech. He'll go to the Hill tomorrow and talk about, quote, saving and protecting the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare, but I'm sure there's some concern that there's unfinished business and that on day one, or let's just say the first several weeks, perhaps, President Trump is able to undo many of the corrosive and backward and, and overly zealous 
uh, regulations, particularly that President Obama has put into place. President elect Trump has promised to do that, and he will make good on the promise. We hear from entrepreneurs every day, and, and would be entrepreneurs, that they just feel strangled by these regulations, that you've got uh, employers who can't keep the jobs here, who can't retain a good workforce and expand their operations here. And you get rid of some of those you know, ridiculous regulations, and right away you're unleashing. And that's probably a big reason why the stock market is is where it they is now. I mean, does the president elect take pride in the rally that we have seen since the election? He's very happy to see that uh, that the market is responding already. Particularly if you go back and you listen to. First of all, everybody said he couldn't win, but then when he did. Uh, the, even that night, like 3 a.m. on, on yeah. Mar Mar November 9th, people said, oh, the stock market is going to tank. It's always, he's always, you know, he's always the, he's always the trendsetter. He's always so the leading predictor. The follow-up is that a lot of people are saying, well, these rally, this rally is going to be dependent on actual change actually happening, such mm -hmm. as corporate tax reform. How quickly do you think that could be? The last time you were on, we had some technical difficulties. You're trying to, I think, make a comparison to the 81 Reagan tax cuts, but we weren't sure. So how, how fast do you think something could be done because well, the, that's what the market's looking for. This sure, point. the more recent comparison I would give you is to, is June of 2001. That is when President George W. Bush had his big oh. tax relief package pushed forward, and he did it with the Democratic Senate. Why? Because as Democratic senators up for re-election the following year in 2002 said, "Oh, my constituents like tax reform. I better vote for it." We have the same situation now, even though we have a Republican-controlled Senate and House. We have the situation where you've got these Democratic senators up for re-election next year, including, if not especially, the 10 that represent states President Trump, President elect Trump just carried. Five of those 10 states he carried by double digits. You're telling me that those United States senators are not going to answer the call of their own constituents and vote for the tax reform package? They should. So we're looking at 2001 as another model where President Bush was able to push that through by June of that year. And people loved it. It spurred a lot of economic growth, as you know. Um, people were very in favor of the tax relief package. And that's something that he's run on. I think he has a mandate for. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.